lakatosia bravedis azekedish maskibala des vetikiza zakabale thank you everybody we are yet again live with another exposition kozekevish make sure you like and share the video as we begin this exposition i'm beginning episode one today and uh it's something profound that i want to share out the homiletical and the exegetical exactitude of this matter to you all so that you can get a thorough and a deep understanding of the realms beyond so make sure that uh, this exposition you listen attentively i will not take time uh, we have, we are already late because we had uh, some few uh, technical issues but well we thank god we are now live so as our custom is I'll just go straight to the point right uh, uh let me put uh, yeah, but ah uh, it's okay let me find maybe a little uh worship music uh crazy okay oh, all right it is all right yeah as i'm waiting for you all to come in today we are working on how to reverse manipulations of the marine kingdom every human being you see walking one two one two here on earth if they live ignorant of the reality of overcoming the marine kingdom one way or the other the marine kingdom will have a hold over something in their lives so genuine victory is obtained when men understand the realm beyond and conquer the realm beyond through the power of the holy spirit so today that's what we are here to share we are not going to waste time at all let me just try to find some uh, worship okay yes that's it uh Sure. that's right uh mm sorabo velite shen ah ah za bere de sa Ah, it's not working. <laughs> the way I expected it to work, but uh, if I if I continue with this uh, waste time. Okay, uh break your bibles uh, quickly. Kabravete gizia to the book. Uh let me begin work with the book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 14. So go with me to the book of First John there it is chapter 2 verse 14 that's correct chapter 2 then verse 14 is right here right so I'll read for you First John chapter 2 verse 14 then we begin to work on the homiletical and the exegetical reality of the marine kingdom thank you First John chapter 2 verse 14 it says I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning I have written unto you young men because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have become ye, ye, ye have of, uh, overcome the wicked one beloved I'll read for the last time then we begin work this is a serious matter 
First John chapter 2 verse 14. Let me read quickly. I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him. That is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because ye are strong. And the word of God abideth in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Close your Bible. Let me start to work. Thank you. If you can hear me clearly, please just uh, uh, write it. We can hear you clearly so that I begin work. Because the moment I begin to enter into the realm of explaining this matter, I don't want any interferences. So if you can hear me clearly, please just write for me. I can hear you clearly. Then I begin work. Sala grossopa di grahase. If you can hear me clearly, please, if there is anyone uh, listening, if you can hear me clearly, please just write for me. I can hear clearly so that I, we can hear you clearly. Ah, excellent. Right, beloved, today I'm working on a powerful exposition in relation to the marine kingdom and how to reverse its manipulation. Every human being that you see walking one to one to here on earth, one way or the other, if they don't understand what I'll tell you today, the marine kingdom will have an effect on something over their lives. So this is not a joking meta exposition because when you look at people that face spiritual husbands, spiritual wives, when you look at people that have got pornographical and masturbation problems, when you look at people that have got a, a terminal failure on everything that they try to do, if you look at people that dream eating, if you look at people that dream seeing themselves in water, if you look at people that see themselves running from dogs or lions, many things, beloved. All these projections are from the marine kingdom so it is necessary for you to listen attentively as i do this work i will not take time at all thank you <clears throat> any human being that you see here on earth that chooses to become a prayer machine must be strong as steel because the devil will fight them even before they get to fight him. The devil has a way of detecting people that have got the ability granted by God, by God to shake his kingdom. So if he discovers a man that carries that ability to shake his kingdom and he finds a way to fight that man even before he realizes himself the man that he carries that ability. The devil will use everything at his exposal to make sure that that man doesn't get to the reality of starting bringing harassment to his kingdom. So in the realm of the spirit, when you look at yourself like this, choosing to become a prayer machine or a representative of God here on earth, there are people that you may see today that carry the ability to bring destruction to the kingdom of the devil and the devil detects it surprisingly even before themselves they know that they carry that ability and when that happens the devil will make sure that you expire before you can do so so in the reality of the spectre of the life that we are living here on earth have you wondered why some men of God and some people started out strong and ended, and ended up miserably? Have you wondered why? Why other men of God you see today started up well being used by God but they expired like useless people? It's because in the reality of them being used by God, they didn't understand that the only thing on earth the devil fears is a man that prays. So in the realm of the spirit, if a man chooses to become a prayer machine, the enemy in his vicissitude will do everything in his effort to try to find a way to weaken that man, not to give in to the ministry of prayer because he knows that any man that has that ministry in them of becoming a prayer machine and an intercessor, they automatically obtain from the Most High God the ability Ability to bring massive destruction into his kingdom. So beloved, I'm submitting to you today that the first significant principle in you staying in constant security from the reality of the marine kingdom, it is praying, but not just prayer. Prayer that is consistent because many men and women 
upon the face of the earth. They register themselves as men and women that pray. But when you zoom in closer into the reality of that registration, you will see that their prayer life is up in this season, off in that season, up in this season, down in that season. Such kind of a prayer life make you a target because what you should realize is that if you pray god gives you the ability to have your eyes on the target which is the devil you will not have anything to do to you but the moment you stop praying the opposite is true you become a target to the devil so a man that is in danger is not a man that prays but a man that is in danger is a man that surrenders to the ministry of prayer only to give up later such men when the devil acts on them he makes sure that he destroys them before they come back to that reality so the first number one secret in this entirety of working with God is understanding that the most dangerous thing you can do to yourself in the spirit realm is registering yourself as a prayer, prayerful person or registering yourself as an intercessor only to find the things in life that weaken that capacity in you. You automatically become the devil's agent. What can I say? You can automatically become the devil's manipulated target without you even realizing so i'm submitting to you today that the first secret brother that you must give yourself to is praying because in the realm of the spirit like first john chapter 2 verse 14 says the devil is to of, to be overcome how do you get victory over the devil you have to overcome him so it means the only way you can overcome the enemy including the marine kingdom is becoming a man and a woman that surrenders himself to the ministry of prayer consistently. That is the first secret. The second secret to the entirety of this matter, it's a secret that pastors and prophets are not explaining well to people to understand. So I'll try my level best today in a nutshell to surrender the reality of this thing to you. Well, my brother, what makes you undetectable in the corridors of darkness is touching the glory of God or being touched by the glory of God. So a lot of you, you don't understand how to touch the glory of God or how to be touched by the glory of God. Well, being touched by the glory of God, it's a three-way process. When we look at it from the point of view of uh, theological august, it is called the number one inductive Number two, synthetic. Number three, historical. Now, when you look at the entirety of the Bible, it's written based on these three facts. Inductive, synthetic, and historical. But to explain what I'm trying to say, I'll break it in simple English. That is how you can understand since not all of us are biblical scholars. The three secrets that I'm trying to explain to you is, number one, you have to make God proud. Number two, God will then employ you. Number three, God will then bless you. Let me explain it thoroughly in a nutshell. The first, the, touching the glory of God is the only thing that can make you undetectable in the corridors of darkness. And I'm saying, mm -hmm. touching the glory, the glory of God or being touched by the glory of God happens in a three-way process, my brother. Number one, you have to make God proud <laughs> of you. When God becomes proud of you, what does he do? He employs you, brother. Just like any good company, and any good boss you see here on earth, for their company to operate, they employ certain people. But they don't just employ people. You have to be qualified for the job that they are offering. What a lot of Christians don't understand is that the kingdom of God employs people. There are people that you see here on earth that have been given a job by God. Now, when I speak of these jobs, I don't mean you applying for a company job and getting a job. I don't mean you accompanying for some paperwork and getting a job. I mean, in the kingdom of God, God gives human beings a job. 
the moment you make God proud and say, wow, this uh, uh, young man or this young woman, this is quite marvelous. Look at the way they pray. Look at the way they fast. Look at the way they study the Bible. Look at the way they adapt to spiritual things. This is something marvelous. The moment God does so, then God says, well, these are the people that I'm looking for. Then God extends a job for you. That the glory of God will rest from the kingdom of God over your life. That this person, I'm giving them a job to represent me upon the face of the earth because they have proven themselves worthy because of this and the, just like on an ordinary company here on earth if you apply for a job you must have the paperwork for the job you are applying for you must have the experience for the job you are applying for now the misconception upon the face of the earth is thinking that god in his sovereignty you just say i say god i love you i love you then god just calls in to give you a spiritual responsibility you must understand that God is not like we human beings who think the devil is a myth. God knows that the devil is there for it is him who created him and it is him who casted him out of heaven. And one of the things God understands is that the devil, he knows he's behind time. So he's trying his level best to mess up people. So God understands the danger of drawing a person into the battle line of facing Lucifer to safeguard the other people and yet that person is a joke. So it means when God employs you, you would have proven yourself worthy. So every time you see yourself going under a struggle, every time you see yourself being disappointed, every time you see yourself praying and fasting and things seems not to be moving, every time you see yourself, you see your ministry not growing, every time you see your finances going down, every time you just begin to detect things going in the opposite direction in your life, that is the time you must press on God because that's how you make him proud that God despite of whatever I'm going through there is nothing on the face of the earth that will make me turn, my, turn myself away from you I'll press on and press on until the end because you must understand that it is better to be to die bound in the flesh but free in the spirit than to die free in the flesh but bound in the spirit so we are saying the situations that you go through in life even though you are a child of God. These are situations that if you don't give up on God, it touches the heart of God. Then he employs you and give you a spiritual responsibility. So power and grace and anointing of a higher dimension is given to people that have been employed by God. So any man or any woman that you see maneuvering in stream dimensions of power, that is the sign you can know that, well, this guy has been employed by God. When you see a person moving in mighty dimension, you don't need a rocket scientist to tell you that that person, God has employed them. Now, when God employs you, just like any good boss, what does he do? He blesses you, my brother. That's how you see people succeeding and fa becoming financially stable. There are things beginning to move. That's why you can look at other prophets and see their tales. They'll tell you, well, it was not easy, but we pressed on and today we are here. I'm sure even you or yourself, you know, of, of pastors and prophets that the, uh, I mean, their life was a sad looking sight. They had literally nothing and everybody thought they were failures. But because God employed them by them servicing themselves before God through prayer, what in, when you look at them today, you'll be surprised, my brother. They've got private jets. You'll be, they are millionaires. They are billionaires. You get the secret. You must not rashly criticize those people. Because when God employs a man, he blesses the man, my brother. Just like any good boss, you work for a company, you do your job well, he blesses you. But when you look at a physical company, promotion comes as a result of you being responsible to the targets that you are being given. It's the same thing in the realm of the spirit. More grace, what we term promotion, is given to people that hit the mark is given to people that perfect their perceptions in working with God is given to people that perfect their work in working with God. So in the realm of the spirit, the reason people have been bewildered by the reality of the marine kingdom is because they have failed on these three things. They are failing to make God proud. Your life and everything about you is heaven is ashamed of you because of the things that you do. So now if you fail to make God proud, God will not employ you. If God employs you, he's not obligated to bless you. So the second secret, my brother, teach yourself 
to make God proud so that he can employ you. When he employs you, you no longer need to pray for finances. You no longer need to pray for breakthroughs. You no longer need to pray for your things to move. The moment God employs you and say, my son, I'm now giving you a job to represent me because you have proven to me that against all odds, you love me with all your heart. Get this job. Do this and this, this for me. My brother, imagine the man that created the universe giving you a responsibility. Then you say that man will not take good care of you. It doesn't make sense. Do you get the secret? So a lot of people are being affected by the marine kingdom because God is not employing them by the reason of their lifestyle. So the moment God doesn't employ you because you are failing to go to make him proud, the devil, what will happen, my brother? The, the devil will try to find or to check out if he can, if he himself, he can employ you. So that is the secret that we must understand that when God employs us, he blesses us. That's why when you look at it from Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21, it makes it very clear that to them that love me, I will entrust them with substance and I will feel their treasures. You get my brother so now we are now moving uh, to the third dimension i hope uh, we are working together uh, well uh, through this exposition as i as i am uh, working on these things right the third the secret my brother for you to mar overcome the, the the manipulations of the marine kingdom listen to it attentively well we human beings we hate loss or losing Thank you. The devil also hates losing. But the unfortunate thing is that the devil, even though he might hate losing, he has already lost the most precious thing that he shouldn't have lost. And what is that? God. So when the devil was casted out of heaven in Revelation chapter 12, he was unlinked with God. Let me repeat it. He was unlinked with God. Don't allow any human being on earth today to convince you that somehow the devil is powerful to a level of still having a link with God nowadays. Because uh, some uh, pastors read uh, Job chapter 2 uh, where it says the sons of men appeared before God and Satan was there in the midst of them. And when they read that verse, they preach, trying to tell people that the devil uh, still has a link with God. If you don't know, the devil still communicates with God. If you don't know, well, it's not true, uh, my brother, uh, from a theological point of view. As you know, I'm a biblical scholar. The reality of the matter is that the devil doesn't have any link with God. He doesn't even know how God looks like. Because when you look at it clearly from Revelation chapter 16, when you look at it clearly from Revelation chapter 19, you will understand that the 24 elders that stand before the throne of God, they bow their heads saying, holy, holy, holy. And when they will be doing so, the glory of God will be moving from glory to glory. Which means when they bow their heads and say glory, the moment they lift up their head, God would have taken another glory. The moment they bow their head and lift up their head, God would have taken another glory. So if it takes them maybe 30 seconds to bow and return their head, and God would have taken another uh, uh, glory, it means every 30 seconds, God transforms into a more beautiful dimension of glory for eternity. So when the devil was casted out of heaven, today, the glory that God has extended with from the time he was casted out of heaven to today, the devil cannot even contemplate how God looks like or even try to imagine it because God has transformed in a way that is beyond his capacity of trying to guess that, ah, how is God now? How does he look now? What glory does he have now? He cannot even attempt to think of that because even himself he knew before he fell as a cherubim that God moves from glory to glory. That's why the only thing that can frustrate Lucifer here on earth is God. Because he doesn't know God now. He doesn't know God. Satan doesn't know God. The privilege you have today to go into your room to pray, to read the Bible, so you can know God. It's a mighty privilege that Lucifer doesn't have. Lucifer doesn't have a way of knowing God. 
he doesn't have a way of being linked with he, he cannot even try to imagine how god looks like now because god every 30 seconds or even less he moves from glory to glory that's how mighty the god that you serve is that's why you see people that give themselves to the ministry of prayer and searching out the deep mysteries of god they become a frustration to lucifer because the moment a man begins to move in the dimension of seeking the face of god he becomes undetectable the devil can no longer know his plans the devil can no longer know what he's planning which means a man that moves with god through a sophisticated relationship with God, can see the plans of Lucifer over his life and over other people's lives. But Lucifer cannot see the plans of God over his life. And that is something that is very frustrating to the devil because he feeds on knowing people's plans so that he can harass them. So the moment you get linked to God, the devil can no longer know your plans and what God is planning but you yourself, you can know his plans and God can reveal what he's planning against you or, all the, uh, or against other individuals. So in that dimension, you stay in a very safe position in the realm of the spirit. So what we as human beings upon the face of this earth have neglected is getting linked with God on a daily basis. So we are saying the moment we fail to be linked with God, on a daily basis, the marine kingdom can only manipulate the lives of people that are not linked with God. Only people that are not linked with God can be affected by the marine kingdom. So the third secret of overcoming the manipulations of the marine kingdom, my brother, my sister, is actually becoming linked with God because the moment you get linked with God that is the only way the marine kingdom will fail to have an effect over your life and the things that you do and we are saying when you give yourself to prayer when you give yourself to living a life that is worthy of the grace of God upon your life when you live such kind of a life you get linked with God you begin to know what the devil doesn't know. The people, even though the devil is spiritual, is extremely limited in the spirit realm. People think uh, since the devil is spiritual, he knows a lot of things. Is very. It is not like that. Information in the spirit realm is reserved for the children of God. God is the only one that has got diverse information in, dis in different astral levels. God is the only one that has got detailed information over every matter, over every situation. Remember, he is the creator of the universe. There is nothing he doesn't know. So demons are limited. They are no longer linked with God. So demons are empty-headed. You know those students at school that didn't want to read or write their homework. So because they didn't want to read and write their homeworks, they would always fail and the teachers would always hit them every day in class because they would fail even something that even the entire class would want. Ah, but this guy, how can he fail such a question that we all discussed here? Such kind of, that's how demons are. Demons are, only, are, are extremely ignorant and useless because the little information they had and the little things they knew when they casted out of heaven, they were not in any way of assessing the higher glory of God that gives a supernatural information and understanding like the angels have. So this is what you must understand that even the marine kingdom is a useless kingdom to people that are linked with God because they are entrusted with the diverse realities of the spirit that the marine kingdom will even fear to appear before the territory of their dominance in the spirit realm. That is the fourth secret, my brother, to overcome the marine kingdom, be linked with God. We are now moving further, my brother, so that uh, 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 God begins to help you. Now, the challenge that we, we human beings have, it's very simple, Oga. 
I will explain to you today. Well, I don't want to waste time, but it is uh, important that I just work on these things uh, spiritual. Well, the challenge that we human beings have, it's very simple. The challenge we have, we fail to understand how can we become extremely persistent in our prayer lives that is the question that everybody has that well we want to pray but it seems like it's a challenge to become persistent you know when it comes to prayer it is true so i'll tell you the secret you see prayer is a time eater let me repeat it prayer it's a time eater thank you so when you are still beginning in the realms of becoming a prayer machine the clock seems to be dragging but the moment you remain consistent against odds and continuously pursue a prayerful lifestyle time will begin to fly which means you now get to a level whereby you can enter 6 hours in prayer and you don't you not even realize it that time is is moved you would stop maybe thinking, ah, I just did an hour in prayer. You look at the clock, you discover, my God, I just did six hours prayer. So we are saying, when you begin this uh, dimension of becoming a prayer machine, in the first beginning of this thing, you know, like I said, the devil fights. It will seem as if time is dragging. You just pray for 10 minutes like this, it will be like you have prayed for seven hours. You, you, time will be like, the time will be like it's not moving at all. But the moment you continuously press on and you begin to be lifted by God and be given more grace to pray, <laughs> time begins to fly. You can actually enter into prayer like this and begin to engage. Rapla Castro Beleves. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us utterance. You are moving, my brother. The moment you stop like this, you look at the time. You have spent six hours in prayer without even realizing it. So I'm telling you the truth. Don't give up on the persistency of becoming a prayer machine. The more you press on, the more God will grant you, grant you the grace to increase in that dimension. When that grace increases, what happens is that it disengages your spirit, your soul, your body from everything that is not of God. So it means even if your life was bewildered by the reality of the marine kingdom, spiritual husbands, spiritual wives, eating in the dream and all these things, having the grace of God of prayer being increased by God over your life because he's seeing that you are pressing on, it will get you into a zone when everything, that is not of God over your life begins to fall off, begins to break loose, begins to leave you, begins to elope and escape. You get the secret of what I'm trying to explain to you now. Well, but in the realm of the spirit, God doesn't extend favor. He is fair to everyone. Yes, that's what a lot of people don't understand. When you look at yourself when you were still, still at school, remember prize giving day where you would sit and teachers and parents would sit and names of people that would have scored would be given prize. Well, Form 4 Stream uh, prize in mathematics is going to Melinda Chawawa. Ah, she stands up, hands are clapped. She walks, gets a prize and come back. For Melinda Chawawa to be given a prize of mathematics, it doesn't mean she was given an exam that was different to other Form 4 students. No! If at that school there were 200 Form 4 students. They were all given the same exam. But it's only that Melinda Chawawa scored a score that was higher than everyone. So she was given a prize. I would like to submit to you the painful truth that in the realm of the spirit is the same thing. The reality of becoming a powerful prophet or pastor or minister of the gospel here on earth is given to all under the same circumstance. But people who score different scores on the platform that God has given them. So which means the reality of becoming anointed by God to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to succeed that reality is not reserved for certain individuals. 
if it was like so there would not be a need for us to continuously trouble people telling them pray pray every time pray pray every time pray pray there's a reason why you see my entire ministry is based on persuading people to pray to fast and to there is hardly any sermon that i can do without it ending up speaking about prayer and fasting and studying the bible why is it so i have understood clearly that in the realm of the spirit the platform to become great to be used by god to be successful to be mighty has been given to every soul upon the face of the earth but the reason why others will be outstanding and the reason why others will seem as though they are better than others in their realms of operation in the spirit realm is simple they would have scored higher than everyone they would have hated it higher than everyone that's why when you look at it from first corinthians chapter 14 paul made it very clear that i pray in tongues more than you all so the ministry of prayer on that uh, on that uh, dimension when paul was saying so he was making it clear that for me to be an apostle for me to have written three quarters of the new testament it isn't necessarily that god has chosen me above you all no the reason why you see myself moving in these dimensions of power the platform has been given to you because the platform of being used by god and becoming great is not mysterious as a lot of people try to make it seem more prophets the platform of being used by god of becoming mighty and becoming successful in operating with god what is that platform it is the gospel of jesus christ that is the platform so we are saying in, with the, in form four students write a mathematical exams but at prize giving day one student is given the prize because they have scored higher it means our own mathematical exam when it comes to christianity is the bible any person that will read this bible and do it as it says better than others who automatically in the realm of the spirit becomes better than everyone as well that's why you see there are other prophets that you can look at and see that well <laughs> this prophet is clearly different from others the way he's used by god but there are thousands and thousands of prophets but even though there are thousands of prophets on earth you yourself you know certain names of prophets in your head that you can say no there are many prophets, but this prophet is used, be being used mightily. This prophet is being used mightily. That prophet is being used mightily, even though you know that there are many prophets. So it's not that that prophet has uh, done something or God favored him or something. No, it's because that prophet has grabbed the message of the gospel, which everyone has access to. He read it, believed it, exercised it, and did what it said better than others and so they reap results that are better than others as well so we are trying to say the reality of operating in spiritual dimensions that causes you to shatter the operation of the kingdom of darkness or the marine kingdom of over your life that reality is invested in you understanding that the platform to becoming great is presented to us all but our dedication to that platform is what will make us difference which means your dedication to prayer your dedication to the bible your dedication to the way you study and meditate on the word of god this is what uh will make someone was trying to call i would like to tell you something today that is painful but it is the truth thank you brother eh, do you yourself know that if prophets and pastors had something vital and victorious to offer human beings today wouldn't be spending the day every day chasing after alcohol and spending the night every day in nightclubs let me repeat it if pastors in today's generation and prophets had something vital and victorious to offer people wouldn't be spending the day every day chasing after alcohol and useless things and the night every day in nightclubs the reason being vitality and victory is every human being
treasure. So when the soul of a human being senses vitality and victory, they attach themselves to it. Meaning to say, if we prophets and pastors adopt the reality of this gospel, not just to come in and preach it here so that you can hear, not to come and exp expose our grammar, how art articulate we are in English. If we come to you with this gospel, not just to preach it because we have given ourselves titles, and, though we are, and so we are now obligated to preach it. If we take this gospel, do as it says, live a life that it says we should live as prophets, pray privately, truthfully, as we want to make it seem like in public that we are prayer machines. Because most of some people uh, want to act in public like that they are prayer machines, and yet in private they don't even know what is prayer. This gospel, if we do what God says we should do in this Bible and cease to become hypocrites, we just love explaining this and collecting offering after explaining. But we actually explain this because our heart has been touched and we want people to make it to heaven, not to give us offering after we are done explaining few facts. If we are living as this Bible tells us to live as prophets and as pastors, let me tell you what will happen. We will be given the anointing of victory and vitality, which is what the prophets and the pastors of today's generation are lacking. Yes, they can, they can drive nice cars, they can stay in beautiful houses, they can uh, have money. Well, it's okay. But we are saying, there is no more vitality and victory in the church. That's why you see, heathens, they don't have a reason why they should come to church. That's why you see, heathens, they don't have a reason why they should listen to a pastor or a prophet. Even when you go on social media today, you discover that Christianity is actually being stumbled upon because prophets and pastors nowadays, they come and preach about Jesus and stuff like that. But being hypocrites in secret, they don't know Jesus. They've got girlfriends all over the place. Even the married one, they've got girlfriends all over the place. They, they use uh, uh, offerings and tithe to, 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 spawn, to, spawn, to, to live a corrupt life. So which means even we people who sow into their lives, if we are not careful to the people that we are sowing into, we might think we are sowing and yet we are actually hoping to sponsor corruption. Because if that prophet uh, uses the money that is being sold in his life to chase after girls and uh, booking different hotels for girlfriends, and you are among the people that is giving that prophet the money, you are also sponsoring the corruption. So we are saying the church today, Let's vitality and victory. That's why you see the world doesn't have any reason to listen to pastors and prophets nowadays. It is only when we will take this Bible and do what it says, not just to preach it, to do what this Bible says, so that God as pastors and prophets will be pleased with our private life. The moment we do so, God will entrust us with the anointing of victory and vitality, which is the anointing that I said, any human being, no matter how hard-necked or stiff-necked he is, no matter how stupid he is, when he dictates vitality and victory, automatically their soul attaches to that reality. That's why you see Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 4, no matter how hard he was, because Moses had vitality and victory in his spirit. Pharaoh got to a point of giving up and say, look, <laughs> my friend, I may try to oppose you, but the truth is you have God. That is the truth. I'm seeing that if I continuously try to fight with you here, I'm the one losing it. So it's better I listen to what you are saying. 
okay go ahead it means even in this there is you see pharaoh my brother he was not a king of a nation he was the king of the world by that time pharaoh was the ruler of the world we got this i'm trying to tell you now he was a wicked king and a ruler of the world there is no which musician you can compare pharaoh to chris brown you can compare pharaoh to barack obama you can compare pharaoh to 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 to, to mel gibson you can compare uh, pharaoh to will smith so we are saying all the celebrities and all the heathens that you are seeing today in this world you can compare them to pharaoh pharaoh was a hard necked person but god because his servant that he had sent he had vitality and victory because he was in constant genuine relation with god that vitality and victory in his soul penetrated pharaoh until he admitted himself that there is a god in this man i will be foolish to continuously contest with this guy so we are saying if pharaoh got to that point what more chris brown what more Barack Obama? What more the president? What more any other celebrity you think is stiff-necked? They will as well give in to God. So we are saying, if vitality, my brother, and victory lack to operate on pastors and prophets, I'm afraid that Christianity will appear as if it is depreciating. Do you know that Muslims are becoming more than Christians? Yes, Muslims. Thank you. They are becoming more than Christians nowadays. Muslims. Now, let me tell you something painful. The painful thing is that when you look at it from uh, 1 Peter chapter uh, 2 and 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, A day is like a thousand years unto the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day unto the Lord. Listen attentively. If a day is like a thousand years unto the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day to the Lord, it means scientists have managed to convince the world in seconds. Let me repeat this. Uh, please try to open your mind to understand what I'm trying to say. I'm saying, In 1 Peter chapter 2 and 2 Peter chapter 1 makes it very clear that a day is like a thousand years unto the Lord and a thousand years unto the Lord is like a day. The best technology that you find on earth today is not more than 100 years. The sophisticated cars that you see, these 21 versions cars, the technology was invented maybe 40 years ago. Sophisticated mobile phones that you see today the technology was invented maybe 20 years ago. The sophisticated gadgets, the houses, and everything that you are seeing today, telecommunication, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, medical machines, and medical facilities, and all these things in the science world that you see, none of them is over 200 years old. They were re discovered maybe 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 80 years ago. You would hardly find any tangible scientific discovery that was discovered 200 years ago. Because to be frank enough with each other, 200 years ago, there were no phones. 300 years ago, there were no vehicles. The White Brothers they were not even invented an aeroplane. So we are saying all the sophisticated aeroplanes, cars, mobile phones, technologies, me medical machines, and everything that you are seeing on earth that was brought it, uh, into reality by sci scientific people, it is not more than 100 years old. Not more than 100 years. So if the Bible makes it very clear that a day is like a thousand years unto the Lord and a thousand years is like a day unto the Lord, it then means that within a matter of seconds in the spiritual reality the scientific world has managed to convince the earth that science works you get the secret thank you so we are saying if scientists have come up with all these discoveries and all these convincings 
that has convinced all of us that wow look at signs within a matter of seconds how much more we that carry god the creator of signs and everything that you see how long should we take to convince the earth that god is real and christianity is the true religion if science, if scientific people in the spirit realm need seconds to say, well, in seconds we want to prove to people that we can make a phone that you can literally do anything on. That doesn't have buttons, that you can just be clicking with your finger. Give us a second in the spirit. We can prove it in the physical that it can happen. If scientific people can say in the realm of the spirit, give us four seconds, we can prove to the world that you can have a car that drives itself then you say oh, you are crazy seconds to prove it. do it let's see then they actually do it and deliver the car you are driving the car today aren't you driving the car they've delivered the phone they've made it aren't you don't you have a smartphone even you are watching me like this you're watching me on the on 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 a, on a, on a, on a smartphone which means they've delivered they've proved <laughs> what they are trying to say but the question is we want christianity to dominate the earth which is all right but can we prove are, are we able to prove god I'm, I'm afraid to tell you that if we lack vitality <laughs> and victory in our work with god it becomes difficult to prove god because if scientific people can prove that look we can make a phone that you can just be touching and do everything on that phone and actually deliver the phone and give you the phone that well like we said we told you 10 years ago that we are going to make a phone that doesn't have buttons we set it down meditated on it and we made it you can now take it there is your phone ah, you open the phone the box ah this is true ah 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 it's true it's true ah, hello you are trying to call they've delivered so if scientific people can deliver tell you maybe 10 years before that we are going to make a car that will drive itself that will be just a bit sitting like this and it will be driving itself then people say mm, get out of here my friend how can you say we make a car that will be driving itself it's impossible then they say it's okay thank you they get into the lab they work on the car then they come out and say like like we promised there is the car <laughs> are you guys serious you pay your money, you enter the car, you start the engine. It starts asking you, where are you going, sir? Well, I'm going to Borodo. Let me drive you, sir. The car begins to move. And you are sitting in that reality to say, my God, this car is actually driving itself. My God, they've delivered. But the question is, we as Christians, if we are given a sick person to you, can we deliver healing? I'll ask you for the last time. As Christian pastors and prophets, if we are given a sick person to heal, can we deliver the healing? That is the question. It is high time we stop hiding behind the saying God is not healing you and blessing you because you don't have faith. Yet it is us prophets and pastors who are lacking vitality and victory because our work with God is public but in private it's compromised. So we are simply wasting people's time. That's why you see people have gotten to a point of not wanting to listen to prophets and pastors. That's why you see people have gotten to a point of saying, ah, these guys are bastards. There's nothing that they are doing tangibly. So, you know, my brother, I'm telling you the truth. We will all fall victim to the marine kingdom when we lack vitality and victory because in public we may want to appear as if we know God. But in secret, our spirit is corrupt. Any prophet or pastor that you see that is married and has a girlfriend, it is a function of the marine kingdom. Any prophet or pastor that you see that has girlfriends all over the place, it doesn't matter how much they try to justify it, whether they like it or not, it is a function of the marine kingdom. Any guy that you see that is serious with God but ends up doing unnecessary things, whether you like it or not, the truth is it is a function of the marine kingdom. And we said it earlier here that the marine kingdom doesn't have an effect on people. 
that you've got a genuine relationship with God in secret, not in pub public where you say, hey, I, I pray or go in your church on stage. Hale, hale, hale. And then people say, you pray. No, we are saying in private when no one is looking at you and no one is watching you. That is when you would want to know uh, if you really know God. So I'm submitting to you that, uh, my brother, the spirit realm needs genuine people. You see, in 1864, a wise man once said, if a butterfly tries to mimic a bird, it will suffer for the rest of its life. If a butterfly tries to mimic a bird, it will suffer for the rest of its life. What does it mean? Don't try to make a public display of knowing God and yet in secret you don't know God. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you that such kind of people, the devil, when he blows them with the heat, he makes sure that they don't rise again. So we are saying the realm of the spirit doesn't have jokers. It has got demons that know that they have made a mistake that cannot be resolved. So such demons hate pretenders. If you try to maneuver in the realm of the spirit as a pretender, such demons will release their rage on you because those demons are angry. They made a mistake that they cannot be fixed. So they, they are not moving around trying to befriend people. They are moving around with that vicious anger of saying we no longer have hope. We have lost it all. So the moment they detect any light in the spirit realm of a human being that is trying to make it appear as if they know God and yet they don't. Ah. They will release their anger on that human being. That's how the marine kingdom descend on people. I'll tell you a secret that I have learned in the years that I've worked with God. You see, in 1426, A Hebrew poet by the name Alexander Almero gave out a certain poem. And on that poem, the first lines of that poem, poem interested me when I read it. What did he say? He said, You can't keep a snake in your backyard and expect it to only bite your neighbors. Let me repeat it for the last time. He said, you cannot keep a snake in your backyard and expect it to only bite your neighbors. It will also bite you. It means we can keep bad habits as prophets, as pastors, and Christians and expect our relationship with God not to be affected. We have overpreached the gospel of grace and yet we fail to understand grace. Grace, even though it means unmerited favor, but from the original Hebrew translation that was translated by Isaac Dowie, who was a theologian. He gave a translation that was different in a commentary that he, he wrote. And that commentary was wrote in 1942 he said this word grace which is translated 
unmerited favor. In the Hebrew translation, in the Hebrew language, the word grace meant two things. So we have focused on the first meaning and we have ne neglected the second meaning. Then he said, I would like to submit that that word grace doesn't only mean unmerited favor. That word grace also means promotion. Which means he was trying to say, well, it is true. This word has got two meanings. So if it say it means unmerited favor, it is not wrong because this word in Hebrew had two meanings. Just like in Shona, you can have a word that means two things. You get the, uh, you get the secret. So he said, but the other meaning that we have ignored for all these years is that this word also means promotion. So even though it means unmerited favor, it also means promotion. So what I'm trying to submit to you is that the grace of God, we don't earn it. We don't deserve it. It is true. But do you know that when you look at it from James chapter 4, verse 7, going forth, it makes it very clear that God increases his grace on people. Have you asked yourself how he increases that grace? It is simple. When you go to work, how do you get promoted yourself? Why do you get promoted at work? At least he can give you a better picture. What I'm trying to tell you is that if we develop a good character, if we go develop a holy life, if we genuinely look, walk with God in private when no one is watching us, it calls for spiritual promotion. And that spiritual promotion, God calls it grace. I don't know if people are hearing me clearly. Hey, and Dr. Toratay me akaribe sagoma and pere ni shoktao. All right, again, go up kwai ka last point. Hey, boss. Well, the last point that I can give you, I'll continue this exposition next week. The last point that I can give you, brothers and sisters, is this. I read a certain book when I was in Bible school that was written in 1892 by Ephraim Mogremo. Ephraim Mogremo. So that uh, book was speaking about the honesty and uh, how to be vital in different topics. But in chapter 3 on that book, in chapter 3 of that book, the first line of that chapter interested me. He said, A dishonest man can, lure, can only lure an honest woman once for sex. Let me repeat it for the last time. A dishonest man can only trick an honest lady once to sleep with that girl. So if a man is dishonest, he can successfully sleep or have sex with an honest lady but that will be the last time because an honest lady will not be foolish to sleep with the guy for the second time she would have known or seen that this guy is an honest man he only wanted to have sex with me he doesn't love me so he is the writer said a dishonest man can only lure an honest lady once for sex well what I'm trying to correlate with you is that in the realm of the spirit, the ultimate boundary and the ultimate security in staying free from the manipulation of the marine kingdom is being honest with God and your life. Let me repeat it. If you want to overcome masturbation and pornography, spiritual wife, spiritual husband, eating in the dream, flying, seeing yourself in water, seeing the dead, failures, stagnation, and all these maladies that are very aghast in nature that are projected by the marine kingdom. If you want to stay free from those things in your life, the secret is one, honesty. The kingdom of heaven runs and operates on honesty. The 
reason why the devil was casted out. He failed to be honest. The reason why holy angels are still with God today is because they are honest. The reason why Paul and all these apostles were used by God and they wrote the Bible is because they are honest. So when you discover your life being surrounded by the marine kingdom, what you need to ask yourself is simple. Which area of my life am I being dishonest? If you detect it and start being honest in that area, automatically, you will not even need a pastor, automatically the marine kingdom loses its grip over your life. So we as Christians upon the face of the earth, we have failed dismally when it comes to honesty. So the last question will be to you, how can you grow your level of honesty before God and life. To be frank enough with you, the only way you can grow your honesty is doing what challenges your dishonesty, which is reading the Bible. Look at the secret. Not just reading the Bible. Well, a lot of you read the Bible, but you don't understand how to read the Bible. There are three ways to read the Bible. Theologically, then I'll tell you the spiritual way of reading the Bible. The first way of reading the Bible as a biblical scholar, we were taught that it is an inductive way of reading the Bible. An inductive way of reading the Bible means reading the Bible and after you have read it, coming up with your own conclusion over what you have read. So which means a person can sit down and read the story of Moses crossing the Red Sea. Then he says, mm, but did this happen? The Red Sea, these guys really, you get the secret. They have read this story, but they are now using their human mind to make a conclusion. That is called an inductive way of reading the Bible. Then we have got a synthetic way of reading the Bible. A synthetic way of reading the Bible is reading the Bible, searching for answers and reality, and making a conclusion on the answers you get. So if you want to know if it is possible for the Red Sea is parted, and you don't know if it is possible, then you read the Bible that it was done, then you believe, ah, so it is possible because the Bible says it happened. That is called an, a synthetic way of reading the Bible. Then we've got what is called historical way of reading the Bible, whereby you read the Bible to get an understanding of history and to get an understanding of other people that were used to God so that through reading it you can get a glimpse of their lives what they went through their challenges so you will be actually reading it to learn from history okay so the children of Israel they were in Egypt okay okay also Paul he was once a hidden then he okay also Peter was a fisherman and stuff like that you are reading it you know just to get an understanding of 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 of, uh, of, of history but all those three ways is what we were taught at Bible school that these are the three ways that human beings read the Bible but as I graduated from Bible school as a biblical scholar and I also began to write my own exposes I discovered that all those three points there's no way all those three ways of reading the Bible don't work the only way that works when reading the Bible is Psalms 119 verse 18 and Psalms 119 verse 11. What does it say? Psalms 119 verse 18, it says, before you read the Bible, pray. Which means, the first way to read the Bible is to read it prayerfully or under the unction of prayer. Psalms 119 verse 11, it says, when you read the Bible, meditate on it. It means, the second way to read the Bible is reading it to meditate on it, not just to read it, then you forget what you have read. Actually trying to read it to not forget what you have read by memorizing the Bible. When I discovered these two secrets, I discovered that they worked mysteriously in my life. That's why you see today, in every chapter of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, every chapter, I can quote more than 12 verses of the Bible. Or, 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 of the Bible. In every chapter of the Bible, so for me to have a person that will sit down with me without notes, just 1v1, having a debate of the Bible, sitting 1v1 without notes or any uh, way we'll be looking, just hitting each other on the reality of the gospel. 
it would be quite dangerous to enter such a debate with me because I realized this early. So the moment you realize it yourself that you need to read the Bible under a prayerful spirit and also read the Bible to memorize it. So that when you are by yourself, maybe you are driving your car or at work, you can just be calling in different verses in your head, you know, just memorizing them so that they stick to your head. It will be marvelous because you get to a point whereby you have got a lot of verses in your head. So whenever, even at work, you speak about the Bible, it will be very, very beautiful because you can simply be quoting the Bible. I know, look guys, uh, the Bible, when you look at it from chapter this to this, it says this is something that is marvelous and God loves people that do that, you know, because... It shows seriousness. Whoa, my brother. My God, time has moved. <laughs> Let me not take long today's exposition. I'll come back again next week. But next week when I'll be speaking about the marine kingdom, uh, today I was introducing the topic. Mm. Today I was introducing the topic just to give you a foundation. But when I'm coming back next week now, I'll be diving in now. To really explain how the marine kingdom operates and stuff like that. Today I was just giving people a secure foundation of the things that they can do to make sure that the marine kingdom doesn't have an effect over their lives. But next week I'll be coming to explain more about the marine kingdom from the biblical uh, point of view and stuff like that. So that you can, uh, you know, get enough help as well. So I'm going to pray for you. But uh, uh, before I pray, Sala Grava Kadesu Grabala Katese Maravala Tisa, the grace of the Lord is sufficient. We are going to pray for the land of Zimbabwe, especially for the vice president of the land for his life to be preserved and things to maneuver well for him because as I'm speaking right now there's a battle in the spirit realm of people that have been set which may claim which may claim his life untimely So I will also, when I will be praying, I would also ask you to help me pray for it and also to help in praying for the entire nation of Zimbabwe because the Holy Spirit revealed that the cries of the people have reached the mercy of God and divine angels have been deployed to touch people that are dealing with with the rulings of this nation to begin to give in to changes and to begin to give in to people's cries so that at least life can become more and more bearable so that at least certain aspects of the nation developments can begin to be detected until the ultimate plan of God over the nation of Zimbabwe will be executed. You see, five years from now. So we are praying uh, and asking God to intervene and continuously work miracles in our nation of Zimbabwe. And we are praying for everyone that is going through a tough time for God to have mercy on them. We are praying for the church again. As you know, we have been told that the only way we can open churches is when we get vaccinated, which is quite a, power, a, a difficult uh, position for me because the vaccination checksense of COVID that people are being given to be frank enough with you, they'll all be reversed and new ones will be given. To say, ah, no, these times, ah, these ones, ah, we are now 100% sure, ah, these ones, lekka, these ones, lekka, ah, these ones, we don't have any doubts at all. 
they are now 100% okay. But what will happen to all those people who were injected forcefully injections that now the people know, uh, to know uh, you hear it isn't they'll just wake up one of, of these mornings just like this and you see it on uh, breaking news ah no the the, the, the vaccines uh, uh, people are and scientists are now calling out for them to be reversed because they are discovering that uh, they were released rashly and they are actually messing people up so they are asking that the uh, vaccinations be reversed so that uh, new ones can be introduced ah these ones they don't have a problem ah, these ones we bait on them ah these ones we can even demonstrate ourselves that they are okay we are now 100 percent sure but the question is well which is all right but what about all those people that were given two doses of the vaccines that are now being said ah 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 ah, ah. We are sorry, we are sorry. Please reverse these vaccines. My God, my God, what you are discovering is dangerous. Please reverse, reverse, reverse. Stop giving people, stop giving people, stop giving people like that. And people, a person has already been injected to Jackson. There will be no compensation for that. To say, ah, well, we are sorry for that. It take this 2,000 US at least to try to fix your health. No. They'll just be reversed just like that. And those that were given the two doses will be told again, come and get the other two doses. So my question is, a vaccine stays in the blood, my brother. If you happen to be given it. Hmm. Because the problem is, if you are given a vaccine and it goes straight into the blood, if it is reversed, the question is, what will it keep doing in the blood? It can turn into a poison because it's no longer working. We, isn't it we are saying if vaccine lives in the blood so that you will not get corona, which is all right. But we are saying if that vaccine, it is announced that it is no longer working properly and it's already in your blood. Is there a system or a medici medication that you can be given? Is there a medication that you can be given for your blood to actually detox itself from that vaccine? I have not heard of such kind of a medication being announced, which would have been better to say, well, these are the vaccines that we are giving, but we have got an antidote. In case if this vaccine does, don't work, it's still all right because we have got a medication that you can take that can remove the vaccine from your body or detox your body. Ah, in that way it will be all right because you say, ah, no, it's not a problem. If they discover that it is not working, I'll just take a course of pills. My system is detoxed, so it's not a problem. So it will be easy for all of us to be vaccinated. But there's no such kind of a meditation. If you are given those two doxes and tomorrow they wake up saying, oh, my God. They no, 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 we are sorry. Please, please, stop, stop. Take these new ones. These ones, oh, these scientists are bastards. They hid. It need to be now breaking news. Ah, the company of vaccines is now being sued. Ah, what's happening again? Ah, the scientists at that company did not give the full information. They, the researchers, they gave, mis gave the world a misrepresentation. So the so and so is now being sold, sued and they, fa they face a challenge of even entering 20 years in prison. Ah, but a person can enter 20 years in prison for giving the world for, for, uh, uh, false information. But the truth is they're going to prison and come out and yet people have died because they themselves, they knew this is wrong. They did they were not vaccinated. So the person can go into the 20 years in prison and come out. But what about the, the masses that were uh, vaccinated? You see, so that is the truth, my brother. The scientists that are behind these things, as you know that every vaccine to be approved, the people that made that vaccine, they write reports that they submit to the government. Those reports are researched and looked at. They give their reasons why this vaccine works. They give their reason why it doesn't have side defense. They give their reason why it will not uh, temper around with human beings' life. You don't think a vaccine, they just make it and start to say, no, it goes through a process of being approved by World Health Organization and stuff like that. So we are saying people that write those reports to submit them to the World Health Organization for, that, for those vaccines to be accepted, to begin to be distributed. That's the people that we are saying, the Holy Spirit is saying, they, they, they were misinforming people on those reports. And one of them in that uh, circle is going to be affected by it and say, ah, no, I cannot keep this truth. Because it's actually eating them right now that this is not true. So we are saying this is the person now that will now say, ah, 
I'm sorry. I want to confess. Ah, what's the problem? Ah, I want to confess. Ah, what's the problem? Ah, the truth is, uh, when we were making this vaccine, the truth is, this is what was happening, this is what was happening, this was what happening. So the moment we were testing this, we, t we detected it and said, look, there's still a minor problem here that we need to, be f to fix before we can you know, uh, to, uh, surrender these vaccines. Then our bosses said, no, it's a small problem, it will not affect the people. Let's save lives. The moment you have seen that it is working, that problem is not a problem. Ah. You know, every medication has got a side effect. What we want is to save life, approve everything with the, with your reports and make a report it so that this vaccine begins to sell. And these are people that are getting command from their seniors. Then they just say, ah, well, it's okay, but I'm trying to say, mm, shut up, my friend, what's your problem? We are saying this is a small problem. It will not affect the people's life. You are here saying, talking nonsense. Do you still want this job? Ah, no, I'm sorry, sir, I'm sorry, sir. And we are saying, this is the person now in the lab making the vaccine. Say, ah, well, it's okay. He signs, he signs. The papers are submitted, researches are done. And the, the, so I'm telling you uh, behind the scenes what is happening. So that is the challenge we are having now in terms of uh, opening church. You see, and yet uh, it's been long since we have not yet opened the church. And uh, that's how difficult it is. So we are trying to pray at least uh, for the president to. Just give us the permission to open only with safety precautions because, hey, there's a spiritual person who sees the realms beyond. To do something that already I know that it will mess up <laughs> my health is quite a difficult thing. But, can uh, I say, vitality and victory? Tunongo bayi watozo ngokumbira hili niko na ngwari. Ngwari wano gono. <laughs> Kwa tinga hile siya. Ndi ngwari wano polese li. Kana zwanyanya uramba. Tita mkita sita mko bayi wa. Kana tape watozo ngo. Wanumoso ngo ya uche. Tuna mataji hili. Kwa tinga hile siya. Tinga tase kuramba. Tishina mataka. Saka haa. Kana wakuma na wajwa kana mpokango tika gie. Kutima cheche avuru. Kana unazuna ubayi wa. Ndi chango bayi wa wacho. Watozo ngokumbira hili nita bayi wa. All right. Ah, well, let me pray for you, my brothers and sisters. To what next week is we do? Teach Pamba Neba Sairo Riri, the Marine Kingdom. Teach him this desire. All right. So let me just pray. Father, by grace and mercy, thank you for being a mighty God. Thank you for being a blessing to our lives. I pray for every viewer that is viewing and that shall view that please, Father, increase their honesty increase the fear of the Lord upon their lives. Increase vitality and victory over their lives. Increase relevance. Increase your grace over their lives. Their sins and iniquities remember no more, Father. Blot away their transgressions and wash them thoroughly with the precious blood of the Lamb. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray for financial favor, for financial breakthrough. I pray for more grace to succeed in every field of their lives. I pray for their marriages. I pray for their families. I pray for their jobs. I pray for their ministries. I pray for everything that is of concern to them, Father, that show yourself strong in their lives, that it may be known that surely there is a God in heaven that blesses, that reveals secrets, and that prospers. I pray that they will not be in lack, Father. You will support them. They will support the work of God. You will support their lives. They will support the needy. They will support the underprivileged because you would have given them, Father, through your mercy, the divine grace and the anointing of prosperity in every field of their lives. This we pray and I, till I meet them again, Father, next week for yet another exposition Preserve them, Father, under the fear of the Lord, and may they continuously live under the unction and the anointing of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, we pray. Amen. Well, my brother, thank you. Next week, thank you.